Farmore was a retail discount drugstore that was founded in 1982 by Michael Monis and David Shapira, who was the CEO of Giant Eagle. In 1992, Farmore's president and CFO would be caught in a large embezzlement and fraud scandal. This all began in 1988. Beginning 1988, Farmore began experiencing financial difficulties in that there was a 1-2% to decline in their gross margin. An investigation was conducted and it demonstrated that Tamco was billing more than they were shipping. Giant Eagle, who was the parent company of Tamco, took responsibility in the matter and paid far more $7 million in settlement. This did not help to decline the gross margin, as the Tamco issue wasn't the only problem far more was facing. It was during this time that Patrick Finn started to create weekly reports, which showed this gross margin issue. Monis, in reviewing the reports, instructed Finn not to show them to Shapira or to the board of directors. Monis feared that Shapira would notice that Tamco's billing problem wasn't what caused the gross margin to be off. In order to keep this lie, he instructed Finn to continue altering the numbers and create an altered financial report that showed understated losses and inflated profits. He was also instructed to create a subledger that tallied the difference between the real reports and the fake reports. The fake reports would be sent to David, hence the name David Reports. These reports were not only sent to Giant Eagle, but to other organizations as well, like the Pittsburgh National Bank, Corporate Partners, Chemical Bank, Westinghouse Credit Corporation, and the National Westminster Bank. By 1991, the subledger had many additions to it. Monis had Finn add the exclusivity fund in the subledger to offset the losses. They also included the power plan, which consisted of a joint advertising plan between Far More and its suppliers, which did not make as much profit as was hoped. They put the expected income in the David reports and the actual losses in the subledger. This is how they treated all shortfalls in merchandise. The subledger also contained the payments that Monis would make toward the World Basketball League, which he was a majority owner of. He ended up giving the league $10.5 million, which he reassured Finn he would pay back. The subledger also had checks from Farmore that were given to Monis for his own benefit. This totaled to another 500000 in order to avoid being caught by the auditors, Monis and Finn tried to hide the losses by adding $200,000 to inventory accounts of each store. By 1991, the subledger was at $148 million. In fall 1991, Stan Sherylstein became far more's controller, and in hearing about the subledger, demanded a meeting with Monis, Finn, and Anderson. In the meeting, Sherylstein was assured that payments would be made to cover the losses and payments made to the World Basketball League. By April 1992, Sherylstein noticed that there was no improvements to the subledger and demanded a second meeting with Monis, Finn, Anderson, and Wally, in which he tape recorded their discussion. In July 1992, Finn voluntarily exposed the fraud that was being committed. In August 1992, executives of Farmore sued Coopers and Librand for malpractice. Following that, Farmore filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection from its creditors. Two days afterwards, Coopers and Librand sued David Shapira for negligence in managing companies' affairs. In November 1993, Finn was sentenced to 33 months in prison for embezzlement. On May 1995, Michael Monis was found guilty of 109 federal felony charges for his role in a $1 billion fraud that ultimately had far more go into bankruptcy. Monis's sentence was 20 years in prison for fraud, a $1 million fine, and five years of probation. <laughs>